on our agenda is a continued hearing for Josh and Maine. Uh, this item is being continued to our next meeting of May 3rd, Joel. May 3rd. Uh, can we have a motion to continue Josh and Maine, please? And a motion to continue Josh and Maine to May 3rd. Second. second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5 0. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is a new hearing for Redmond Road. Uh, I will be recusing myself from this and Mark will chair this. And then I will go back to the other hearings. Jeff, do you want to read that into the record for us? Uh, out of my reading. reading. Oh, I have a different piece of paper than you. <laughs> I'm reading the wrong file. Redmond Road. Oh, it's right there. 72. Are these new maps? Yeah. Are they what? New maps. Petition of Robert W. Murray, trustee of Somerset Realty Trust for property located at 0 Redmond Road, a.k.a. McSweeney Way, a.k.a. Somerset Street, Burlington, Mass., as shown in the Burlington Assessor's Records Map and Parcel Reference Number 29-75-0, the applicant is seeking a variance to construct a single-family house within the required 100 foot of paved frontage, 32 feet of frontage. The request is in violation of the minimum frontage requirement of Article 5, Section 5.2.0 and dimensional requirements set out in the section 5.1.2.1-5.1.2.5. Documentation in support of this proposal is available for public inspection as shown in the plans filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals, a copy which is on file at the Town Clerk's Office and the Board of Appeals website. Application 22-5. Thank you, Jeff. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Sir. Thomas Murphy here for the applicant. With me at the table is uh, Mr. Robert Murray, who's the owner of the parcel in question. Um, as was just described, this is a, um, a large parcel of land, 47,257 square feet. Vacant land currently. Uh, there's wetlands back in that area. Uh, so of the 47,257 square foot in the lot, 28, 24,870 feet, 78 feet of, uh, square feet of uplands. So it's a legal lot from an from a area standpoint. Uh, minimum uh, uplands is 20,000 square feet under our bylaws. Uh, there was also almost 400 feet of frontage on a paper street, which was McSweeney Way slash Somerset Street, if you look at the plan. Um, and Somerset Street is entirely a paper street uh, for the most part. Uh, there's about a 30-foot stretch at the beginning uh, that was approved and installed when um, uh, the, the existing house in Sweeney Way was built a number of years ago. Uh, so of the 400, uh, 394, 78 feet of frontage that we have in Somerset Street, uh, 30, 32 feet of that is, is, um, is actually paved. So the, the request for the board this evening is a variance on, on the frontage, even though we have over 100 feet of frontage uh, on paper, we only have 32 foot of frontage that's currently paved. Um, and that requires a variance. Um, this property, as I said, is a, is a large lot of land uh, uh, with significant wetlands on it. Uh, Mr. Murray has already appeared before the Conservation Commission uh, for this project and received um, their approval. Part and parcel of that process was Mr. Murray has agreed to um, uh, put a deed restriction on, uh, a conservation restriction on the property that will run with the land. Um, in the event that this, um, this variance is allowed in the public permit issues. Um, so uh, the Conservation Commission was, was satisfied with the, with the proposal, and um, they were in return getting a significant conservation restriction, which is something that um, they were very interested in, given the, the, the area in question. Uh, so that's basically, uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the, the gist of the, um, of the, of the situation. <coughs> Uh, under the, the statutory criteria that the, the, the board has to find in order to grant a variance, um, again, I would submit that they were all present in this particular case. Uh, the first deals with the hardship uh, relating to the topography of the shape of the lot, topography of the land. Here we have a, a piece of property that's um, uh, 
very large, um, but does have wetlands. And, and the wetlands makes it difficult to uh, build out Somerset Road for the full 100 feet, which is why we need the, why we need the variance. So there clearly is a, um, a, to, a topographical related um, hardship uh, that, that runs with this land. Um, uh, I submit that the relief sought, relief sought will not cause substantial detriment to the public good. Uh, in fact, I would submit that it provides benefit to the public good because part and parcel of this would be the conservation restriction that I referenced earlier um, that will cover most of the lot and um, provide open space protection, floodplain protection, protection of wildlife habitat, will provide access by the town for purposes of determining compliance with the conservation restriction. Uh, so that I would submit is a is a um, is a benefit to the town, and as well as the immediate neighbors. I will also not nullify, again, in my opinion, nullify or substantially derogate from the intent of the zoning bylaw, the frontage bylaw. Um, in my opinion, the purpose behind that is to provide sufficient spacing between houses, to provide so that the houses aren't going to be one on top of each other, and everybody has a little bit of privacy. In this particular case, it's a, like I said, a 47,000 square foot lot. This will be the only house on the lot. There won't be any houses beyond the lot because of the uh, conservation restrictions. So clearly privacy um, is not really an issue here. So with all of that, Mr. Chair, um, obviously we're willing and able to address any questions or concerns the board might have, but um, what we are looking for is a, a favorable vote on the request for the frontage variance. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Jeremy? <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I actually don't have any questions on this one as of right now. Jeff? No questions at the moment. John? No, we. Joe? No questions. I have a question. <laughs> so, where are you measuring the 100 feet? On this, on this plan, from where to where is that? Which hundred, that which, hun which hundred feet are you referring to? So the measurement of the hundred feet is is from where to where? These gentlemen are showing me. These. Question. This one. This has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. So. The 32 feet is right here on the paved okay. portion, but there is 400. So the Paper Street continues out to, out the, to Raymond Road. Right, yeah, yeah. On paper, yes. Raymond Road is a paper road in that area as well, but yes, it does. Okay. So just the first 32 feet, roughly, of that long stretch of Somerset Street has, a, has paper top. So that's, that abuts McSweeney Way, is that? McSweeney Way, Somerset Street, if you look at the old plan, Somerset Street runs from Bedford Street all the way into Raymond Road. When uh, McSweeney Way was built, and I think that was probably 20 years ago, um, Terry McSweeney actually was the one that did that, and he named the street after himself. So, <laughs> so that part of the, that, that became McSweeney Way right up to where his house is. But if you look at the, the plans of record, it's, it's Somerset Street. So. So in any event, um, he um, constructed McSweeney Way at that time. And the current layout is, as you can see on this plan, uh, it's paved from Bedford Street, goes kind of a roundabout onto his property, and then uh, back, back on the McSweeney Way. So your, uh, the, the plan that I'm looking at, this is uh, the plan for variance, yep. proposes a driveway from, from McSweeney, McSweeney Way, Way onto our property. Onto that property. And so do you, when you say you were already before the Conservation Commission, do you, did you get a written decision? Yeah, we've got orders and conditions and um, um, it's one of those things we had to go both places and so we figured um, we do conservation first because if they were kind of allow it doesn't make sense. Right, okay. Um, so it's all, that, um, what was that, back in the fall? Fall, yeah. yeah. Um, so we have, that's been done. Mm -hmm. uh, 
as one of the conditions is getting approval to build a, a house on the lot before we grant the covenant, uh, the restrictions, the contribution restrictions. Right. Uh, All right. So. Seeing as there's no more. I got a question. Oh, oh, sorry, John. So if you already have 32 feet and you got a paper street there that goes all the way to the end, mm -hmm. why don't you just pave the other? Well, that's because because the wetlands covers part of it. But you can't do it. Yeah. Um, you know, there are ways of, of, of replicating things. <coughs> it, it would be, you know, it's, it's, it's significant wetlands. And, and to the conservation um, point, it would rather go this way and not disrupt the wetlands and try to replicate things. And, Thank you. All right. Thank you, John. And if, uh, we have no more comments from the board, then we'll open it up to this. Neighbors. I'm sorry? Yeah, I want to hear the neighbors. I want to hear from the neighbors. Yeah. So if anybody here uh, would like to either uh, support or not support this uh, application, if you could kindly step up to the microphone and we'd be happy to hear from you. Seeing as there are no comments from uh, the public, uh, I will uh, ask the rest of the board here if they have any more questions. Do you have any any questions, gentlemen? Or no any questions. commentary? No, I mean, uh, if the neighbors aren't opposed to it. He's got a 4,700 square foot lot there, 47,000 square foot lot. The only thing he's missing is his frontage. I'm not going to stand in his way. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's in a, from what the conservation said, it'd be better off to not have the thing paved and do it this way. It'd be better for the public. Okay. If a lot that size, you know, it seems okay. like paving just to pave to build a house when you get a variance. It's 47,000 plus square feet. Yeah. Rough without it. So if there are no more. Uh, Questions or comments from the board? I'll take a motion. Motion. Close, close, close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All those Second. in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Public hearing is closed. If anybody would like to make a motion, I'm happy to entertain it. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, Red Redmond Road as written. Second. All those, all those in favor? Aye. 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 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Right, is this yours or is this Michael's? Yeah, that's mine. item on our agenda is a new hearing for signage at Rosa Mexicano as advertised as the applicant here please give us an overview of your application oh, good evening first I'd like to explore uh, just explain that this application was originally submitted by Tracy Becker with our company and she fell ill over the weekend. So I'm here in her place. Our proposal is to have two wall signs for Rosa Mexicano on the uh, outside elevation. Uh, the main identification sign above the restaurant, which meets code, and then to have a smaller sign above the entrance to help provide guidance. Uh, as we stated in our application, we believe we need both of them, the larger sign, because the property is so large and uh, the distance is so great, you need a large sign just to get people to that area. And then once they're out of the cars, the smaller sign provides direction for, for the public. So it's, rather than being a detriment, it's very helpful. The uh, large sign is a uh, faux neon. It's made out of LED and tubing that looks like neon. 
only uh, four tenths of an inch wide. So it'd be very tasteful. The sign above the door is non illuminated. And I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll start with comments from the board. Uh, John, start with you. Well, okay. My comments are. Yeah, it's a big area, but just because you have a big area doesn't mean you should have a sign to, to go with it. I'm not a fan of two signs, but I think that maybe if, and, and I don't like the neon look either, that, but that's just me personal. But, um, uh, you know, I've been, I've been, I went to the mall a few times in the last couple of weeks because I know we get a lot more signs coming in and stuff like that, and I really am into trying to keep the signage down on the signs. But I think I, do, I think we got it wrong, first of all, the palm we gave them. The signs are too big. But then I think I, I got it wrong on that Josh and Maine because, you know, maybe when I see something like this, I don't like this sign here, it's too, it's too big, but they do need another little one over by the door, too. So I'm going to loosen my stance up with that. I'll, I'll go along with whatever the rest of the board says, but... I'm not crazy about just because you have that area, you have such a big sign. I would like to see it minimized. Whatever we can get it minimized down to, other than that, I'd be okay. Well, the 36 inch letters, we could have gone larger and still been within code. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes with the rest of the board. All right. Mark? I have no questions at this time. Joe? No questions at this time. Jeff? <clears throat> um, where exactly is this located? Is this in the um, spot there was a former Mexican restaurant? Is this next to the food court? Um, there's a curved door entering the, the uh, mall, and Legal Seafood is to the right of that curved <clears throat> door. Yeah, it this is, is to the left. that same spot then. And I took a ride by, and the previous tenant also had the same two signs, except their canopy sign was illuminated. This one's not illuminated. That is a big plus. That's not illuminated. Yeah. The other one. No other questions at the moment. Okay. So, so the smaller sign is not illuminated. Is there any lighting on it, or is it just the ambient lighting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So, I'm good. Okay. Um, in the application here, there seems to be a third sign. I'm having trouble placing that. It's a a six foot circle. Yeah, but I'm not. Is that in, inside yeah, I, the mall? That is inside the mall. Oh. We, we pulled that out very early. You must have gotten an early okay, cause the, set of the drawings. The set of the drawings is exterior elevation. That was what was confusing <laughs> me. All right, so if that's inside, then it's not under our jurisdiction. So that, that's fine. Um, that's why I was confused. Um, could you maybe describe this neon look that that you said this would look like because I kind of agree with John. I don't like the, uh, the concept in my head about neon right. signs. Right. So if you could maybe explain like how that, like how that, how bright that is. I'm assuming it doesn't flash or anything like that. Maybe it doesn't, it doesn't flash. It's steady light, steady, steady color. Um, and it looks, has the soft glow of neon. It's just no voltage and, uh, you know, very safe and, uh, Again, for considering the size of the sign, it's going to produce much less light than if you had, say, channel letters. Uh, again, it's only four tenths of an inch wide, so. So, so this would look like like the tube. It would look like the tubing you would see in like neon. Yeah, one like inch neon. Tube. Yeah, it's pretty small. Right. Um, do you have this page have in your those? packet? Yeah. The, yeah. yeah, it gives a little yeah. more no, yeah. cover it. The next page. Detail the dimensions yeah. and yeah. Alright, I, I honestly didn't really have a problem with it until you said neon, so that kinda of threw me for a loop, so I'm gonna have to think about that a little bit, but um, in the meantime, I will open this up to the public. If there is anyone here that would like to speak in favor or against this proposal, uh, please step up to the microphone. All right, uh, 
Uh, seeing none, why don't we keep the hearing open and see if there's any more comments before we close it. Um, I, don't, I don't really have anything else with the neon. I'm just trying to kind of wrap my head around it. I don't know if anyone else has any, any other thoughts on this. The letters are about three feet in height. Uh, what would you say to a reduction in the size of the lettering? That's a possibility. Although I, I think they really aren't very large compared to other signs on the exterior of the mall. But you think they are or aren't? Aren't. Yeah, we're just we're seeing a lot of signage down there, so I mean, same as what was there. <laughs> Again, they're in a very delicate look to them with the size of the stroke. I mean. Mm -hmm. Think you think the three feet's all right? Or you think we should think of a small one? The more you look at it, the three feet is just a capital in the R and the M. The rest of it looks like it's probably 30 inches. Mm -hmm. I think we should compromise yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to dictate how, how low it's going to go, but I mean, so it's 30, go 36 inches. I mean, if we went down to 32, I mean, that would reduce it. I mean, is that acceptable? Oh, that would make the lowercase letters 24 or so? Yeah, it's hard to tell. You don't have a dimension on the lowercase. No. If you did, we 30. could do it that way. We could do 32. 32? Okay. All right. Any other comments from the board? No. All right. Uh, we can take a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Um, sorry, before we do that. Um, I'm just gonna go back and forth with you guys. So I'll have I'll have Jeff do this one to start, and Jeremy next. So, so we have motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Someone like to make a motion. Make a motion to approve the special sign permit for Rosa Mexicano uh, in accordance with the plans that have been submitted to the board um, with the uh, modification of the, the uh, tube lighting from 36, the, the, uh, the capital, capital letters from 36 to 32. And the other letters respectfully. Uh, yeah, uh, right, you know, right, right, yeah. right, right. Then I'm good. That's fine. Uh, you want to just Is there put anything the, else you just, want to add? Just the lumens. Uh, the 90 lumens per square <coughs> restriction on the lighting, and that there would be no other signs except by. Uh, even if by right. Even if by right. Yeah. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was <clears throat> Okay, the next item on our agenda is a new hearing for a sign permit for furniture consignment. Uh, is the applicant here? Can you please uh, introduce yourself and give us an overview of your proposal. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jay Kahn from the Sign Center in Haverhill. I've got Jay Frucci, the owner of the business, and um, our permit coordinator as well, Kathy Brown. Um, this is a property that is um, improved from 
its prior use it's, was the same use as a furniture store. It's 45 Middlesex Turnpike, so a very commercial area on a busy street. It was formerly Metropolitan Furniture, and now it's gonna be Furniture Consignment. This is his first, fourth uh, store continuing the business of what he is doing of high-end uh, furniture. The two signs are somewhat by right. This is a one-story building with a parapet, and so they are at the four feet, which is what allowed actually up to six, and then the length of the building, we are under that. We are smaller than the original signs on all three signs, and then the one on the other side that faces Old Concord Road and the shopping center. The original signs um, were 63 inches tall by 327, and they were approved in 2016 via a variance um, in front of this group. These are reduced to 48 by 332, so they're over a, four, over a foot shorter and essentially the same length. One is on the front of the building where there is essentially, um, if you look at the plot plan, it's close to the street. There's no opportunity for a freestanding sign. Okay, if you had the plot plan, there's no street frontage. So a freestanding sign, wouldn't, there's no space for it on this property. So there's one on the front of the building which matches the entrance side of the, of the um, furniture store as well. The third sign replaces the sign that's facing Old Concord Road. There are improvements for the building. As you can see, the current uh, state that has been um, rebuilt to the parapet is up, architectural elements were added. There's also windows along the front of this building, so you couldn't put it low. So it's centered in that parapet, so basically a first floor uh, sign. It is appropriate for the building as this board determined in 2016. The um, conditions are essentially the same as what you approved at that point. We think it's in the spirit of the bylaw, and since it's, um, no more, it's less relief than what you granted in 2016, we don't think it's injurious to any parties and substantial justice as new business owners using the property to bring a, a business to um, Burlington. And so we thank you and look forward to your support and ready to answer any questions you might have. Oh, I, excuse me, these are internally illuminated light boxes. Um, the cap letters are 18 inches, the lower are 12, and the big swooshy G is, I think, 40, which drives the height. So that's the only big letter is the G. All right, thank you. Uh, Jeremy, we'll start with you. I don't have any questions on this. Yeah? <clears throat> uh, not at this time. All right, Joe? I'm looking at three different signs. There's three different signs where? Correct, that's all we, there were three on the building that you approved. Yeah. One on the street that would be somewhat of a freestanding sign if it was a lot. One at the entrance of the building and one facing a um, old Concord Road in the shopping center. So as you're driving up and down Middlesex Turnpike. I don't have any questions at this time. All right, John. I don't have any questions, but I'll comment if you don't mind. The, the, I, I, I like the fact that the signs are smaller square footage than what we had there before. I think that's a big win for Burlington. I don't think this building needs three signs. I agree they could use that front sign, and I think they should get the sign on the left side, but the sign facing the parking lot, where Burton's Grill is and, and those guys in there, it, it's redundant, they don't need it. All the traffic that comes down from that street, when they sit up there at that traffic and stuff, they'll easily be able to see that front sign from the building. I'd like to see the sign on that side go away altogether. So. All right. Um, I don't really have anything to add to this right now. Um, <clears throat> so this is a public hearing. We'll open it up to the public. If the, is there anyone that would like to speak on this matter? Please come up to the microphone. Keep the hearing open for now. Um, well, do you want to comment on the third sign that John commented on? It's really the traffic coming from both ways. Middlesex Turnpike, commercial area. So you've got traffic going. Um, I'm assuming it's east-west or north-south at that point. I'm not 100% sure. Yes. But it's, it's the two sides of the building that you see. And the fact that there's retail business back there 
um, into that lot. So it's just further awareness um, and which lesser is, than true. the current conditions. So he's got signs coming both ways, but you don't really need to come from that way. It's not drawing anybody in. It's just more signage. You know, anybody coming in from Lexington is going to see that front sign from the traffic light back. Just a reason for it. Right. I mean, this sign, this the third sign that we're talking about here, this really, I mean, it's visible from the road, but it's really, you're really targeting people that are in the other plaza there. Correct. That's where it's the most visible. I mean, I think I would tend to agree with John on that. I mean, maybe a reduction, but I don't know how you're going to really reduce that and make it visible at that point. But I think you're getting your traffic from uh, Middlesex Turnpike. So is this... It's hard to gauge the distance here, but this isn't really going to be that visible from the turnpike. The front, the front sign would be much more visible from the turnpike, correct? You know it better than I. As you're coming down three from Lexington, than I do. Are you coming down that hill from? Um, I, I don't have a good sense of that, other than knowing it's visible as you're driving down. From the crest down to the sort, you're going to be looking. You'll see two signs, and there's just no real reason to be seeing the two signs. You get a chance to maybe clean it up a little bit. I have no, I don't have a problem with the front one or the other one, but I'd like to see which, that one go which away. Which one are you saying should go away? Well, here's what I'm talking about. This sign right here. Number three. Yeah, number three. All the traffic comes from out here. You can see that front sign from before the, before you get to the Concord Road. I tend to agree uh, with the, uh, the chair and yeah, my colleague. Yeah, let's just see if we can really market that coming out. Yeah. Just on, on old. Any other thoughts on that on the third sign, I guess? I, there's been a third sign there forever. I just found an old street view, and when it was form antique, it was three sided the same way, so I, I don't see a problem. Kind of in agreement with, um, you know, getting rid of the third sign facing the parking lot. That front sign facing the turnpike is, you know, it's 24 feet long. That's just pretty massive. Uh, you know, that's a lot of signage. So if they don't see that at the set of lights turning in, it, you know. It does leave a big blank wall on it. They did dress right. up that wall from what it used to look like. Yeah. Um, well, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll put it to you. The, the board's not totally split, but not totally in favor of that third sign. Is it something you can live without? Well, the owner's here, so we'll let him address it. And the sign is long. A, your bylaw allows for the length of the building, which allows for that. But they're only, they're the characters aren't big. It's a long name brand. So front of consignment gallery is a long name. And so with only 18 inch characters for the dominant part of it, that's what's driving the length. So it works with the bylaw, it fits the building appropriately. Um, so that's what's making it a big sign. Jay, do you want to address? Yeah. If you could just please um, just introduce Come yourself to the microphone just so the people at home can hear. Okay. Yep. My name is Jay Frucci. I own the business. It's Furniture Consignment Gallery. and. Um, I feel like that third sign is really critical because we're also fighting with the H Mart sign that's pretty much right on the property. And uh, and you really, you know, the front sign, you, you really aren't gonna see that because you're driving by it. So you have the side sign and then the front sign, it's it's really that 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 third sign that's in the in the uh, in the, the that faces the plaza, I think is you know, when I look at the business in that building, I'm like, man, that we gotta have that. I, I'd give up one of the others. <laughs> I was just about to ask you that question. <laughs> against, uh, so he also made the investment of the building from the owner. The owner of the building was the former business owner, and so he, as he observed it, did his build-out plans. Um, obviously, he knew he had to come before the board, but he was looking at building the brand of his business on what the existing conditions were. Absolutely. Yep. 
And I think, like you said, it's been a, it's been a furniture store for 60 years, and it's been. I don't see why that makes a difference. Uh, well, it's been a successful location for maybe the signage has been a reason for that. I don't see it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time we're you know just trying to you know make some reductions here and there because a lot of businesses come in they you know they'd like to put signage on every surface they can. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to say that that's what you're trying to do here. I'm just well, I, th I think we've, you know. we've upgraded the look of the building in a, in a significant way, which should be a very positive thing for the town. And, and what conditions are different from 2016 when you approved what was removed from the building? Yeah, I mean, one th something that the board approved, it's not necessarily what this board would approve now, you know, and we do see more signage come up. The, that plaza is taking a change. So, you know, again, trying to reduce signage from, from lot to lot is something um, that we try to do when we think that it's overkill. Um. So you mentioned that you'd be willing to give up another sign. Is that one of the five? Is that true? Or? I think all the traffic is coming forward, but I don't know. The par there's no parapet there. Right? You've got the storage area. There's no place to put it further forward. Right. I think if you give up a sign, it would be that one because of the visibility of the street. That's too far back, I think, um, to make it a dominant sign. On, on the east side of the building. Because it's so far back. Okay. So which, which signs are you choosing on well, one, two, uh, and three? I mean, well, he's choosing three. I don't want to choose three. <laughs> you know that. He had to oh give it up. <laughs> I think that's a killer. That's a killer. The signage on, on that road is it's critical. We are a small business competing against these so, you know, Fortune 500 companies. Let me ask you this. You, the, the chairman mentioned that you seem to be targeting the people in the that are coming out of the shopping plaza. Is that the... Well, there's residential back there too that comes through. Okay. So, yeah, and you also have them I in mean, that, which which it's going north, right? That northbound traffic, they don't see any signage. Well, the northbound. And it's a huge it's building. It's coming south, it right? Huge the, building. the north. That is the northbound side. Thank you. Yeah, but it's. I guess that was part of my point before. That that's set a couple hundred feet back from Middlesex <coughs> Pike. I think I agree with you, John. I think you'd be seeing the, the signage on the front. You can't. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you go drive, go up there and drive in from west, you'll be able to, you'll be looking at both two of their signs at the same time. It's not a couple hundred feet. The building is... Um, okay, but I don't have a problem with the other signs. If right. the third sign stays <laughs> in, I'm voting against it. It's just the way it's going to go. Even if they lost one of the other signs? Even if they lost one of the other signs. I don't have a problem with the other signs. Okay. I, All right. Why would I even care? Okay. Is there any way for you to reduce that, sir, to that sir, third sign? I, I think it becomes ineffective. Okay. Again, when, you, when you're starting with 18-inch characters, to reduce it, you won't have readability. You'll see a blue blob. If you pull that sign off, you can see the shadow of the old sign. It's not... Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that one's, that's much larger, the sign. That's going to be worse. You know, 20% less than what's there now. Mm -hmm. So you, you're achieving the reduction from what currently is. I don't see why we have to settle. No, I mean... A smaller sign. Well, I'm just trying to see if we, there's a solution that works for everybody. But, I mean, I agree, I agree with you. I think the sign is, is redundant. And I know that there was a sign there before, but I don't know that that necessarily means it needs to be a sign there now. Um, Take more comments from the board, or take a motion, or no, it's the I don't know. There's a I'll motion, but no one's gonna like it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not sure if there's a middle ground on this. It sounds like, I mean, if the board members are looking to make a motion, it's either gonna be with and possibly voted down, or without and possibly approved. So I don't know if you want to take your chances. <laughs> no, I hear it. There, there's no point in a continuance, because there's no more evidence, right? So there's nothing else that could be presented. Yeah, that's where I'm going. And so, I mean, uh, to, to reduce, to take one of the other signs away, we just 
constructed a parapet to... Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I, I agree. I think the other two signs are the ones you need, but I mean... Can I, can I just explain to them the ramifications? Mm -hmm. Thank you. We will withdraw the third sign and go for the front and the side of the building. All right. So thank you. As you would make your promotion in support of that. Thank you. All right. Uh, do we have like a number or a letter to these signs? Just There's a bike. One, two, and three, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We want to make sure that that's on the legal <laughs> end. <laughs> Didn't save me any. <laughs> wasn't my intention. Wasn't my intention to <laughs> just this what I do. So. All right. So we'll just have to make sure we reference which signs we're approving. Um, so well. let's. I, I would refer to it as the entrance of the building in the front of the building. Okay. S um, so let's first take a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Sorry, Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. Okay, and someone wants to take a stab at a motion. Make a motion to approve the uh, sign variance for 45 Middlesex Turnpike, uh, uh, consistent with the plans that were filed with the application, and specifically plan that shows the location of, uh, of the signs that were applied for, uh, one, two, and three, and this would exclude sign number three, correct? Correct. And so, um, and as far as the lighting would be restricted to 90 lumens per square foot and no other signs on the property except by uh, right. No, even if by right. Even if by right. Sorry. Okay, motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, the, let's see, the next item on our agenda is a new hearing for signage for D1 training as advertised. Is the applicant here for D1 training? postpone I mean can we take it out of order right okay so we need to vote for that right yeah okay all right we'll we'll take a motion to move d1 training to the end of the meeting it's a motion to uh, take d1 training out of order to the end of the meeting second motion is made and seconded all those in favor aye, aye. aye. five zero Okay, the next item on our agenda is a new hear hearing for signage for Strega, as advertised. This is the applicant here. Good evening, how you guys doing?
Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. For the record, Christine Hung, Reamer and Bronstein, attorney for the applicant. Um, with me today, I have Damon Irby from Sterling Sign and Kim Dinsmore, executive VP of operations at Strega. Um, Strega Italiano is an authentic Italian restaurant that opened up its first restaurant in the North End. From that success of that restaurant, it expanded its operations and opened up other um, restaurants in the Back Bay, the Seaport, and in Woburn. And it currently um, is looking to open up a restaurant in Burlington at 92 Middlesex Turnpike, which is the site of the former Del Frisco's, which closed in October 2019. Um, shortly after that, uh, COVID hit, and as you know, the restaurant industry was adversely affected uh, by the pandemic, but Stra uh, Strega is now excited to be opening up at that location. Um, as you can see from the handouts that I provided to you, this site at 92 Middlesex Turnpike is, is a, it's a difficult site in that it is set back from Middlesex Turnpike. Um, you can see on page one the, the location um, of the site as it relates to Middlesex Turnpike, which is set back from the other buildings along that strip. Um, page two is as you are traveling away from Lexington towards Northwest Park, you can see the building um, kind of in that corner as you're approaching Middlesex Turnpike. Um, in addition, the landscaping um, that is in the frontage and on the sides also obstruct the view of the building that's set back, and you can see that on page three, which is a current view of the building. And then on page four, you can see the proposed uh, rendering of the new signage at Del Frisco's. The applicant is seeking um, relief for two wall signs, one on that front facade above the entranceway, and then the other on the sidewall, as well as the panel on the directory sign, which is dimensionally compliant. But, but because of the condition, a previous condition, no other signs, even if by right. Um, so, Damon, would you like to add anything? No, no, not right now. I mean, just really all the plans are there, and the drawings are kind of self-explanatory of what we're trying to do. And it's, it's the same square footage that was there before for Del Frisco's on both sides. And um, yeah, just like space channel letters. Also what Del Frisco had there. So it's basically in the same area, same square yeah. footage. S same location, approximately same so uh, size. So we welcome any comments or questions from the board. Thank you. Thank you. John, is that you? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not the front sign. I, I don't get this. I don't get the other side. It's it's in the back part of the building on the inside of the parking lot. It's, who's that for? It's really visible from 95. Yeah. You know, so if you're going on Route 3 North, you can see that sign there. Uh, their building is really set back from the road, and, and I agree. I, I agree. The building is set way, way back. Yeah, it's difficult to even get to as far as the traffic flow. You have to go up and turn around, and uh, there's just a lot of landscape and trees there. So, but okay. Well, uh, I don't want to go too crazy over there. People think I'm a sign Nazi or something, but I like the front sign. I have no problem with the sign of the tower, even though I don't like the towers itself. But uh, I'm. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta swallow this one. So we'll just let everybody else go through and see. Okay, thank see you. See if you can change my mind. Right. Appreciate it. All right, Mark. No questions. All right, Joe. <clears throat> there with the front sign. You know, I don't have an issue with the side. So All I can say is, if you look at her, what what what, what she showed you here. The, the, side, the sign that they're talking about is way in the back part of the building. I mean, there's no, no, nobody's going to see it except for people in their parking lot. That's one of the reasons why I think you need it. Mm -hmm. It's when you're, if you've ever been in that location. I've been to Del Frisco's once. Mm -hmm. But it is tough to kind of navigate through that maze. It, is a, it is a maze of a parking lot. And so if you're looking, even if you saw that building from the front, helps to, to have some directory on the side of that building. 
So there's not even an entrance on that side, is there? There's no entrance on that side of the building, is there? Yes. There's an exterior seating area, but I and I think you can open. The there is a side door. Yes. There's a side door there. Yeah. And it's a one way in, one way out from that complex. So I mean, it's a it's a difficult site in that as you're traveling toward Northwest Park, there's no left access, so you almost have to turn around. And similarly, as you're going the opposite way, it's just a one way entrance in and out. I have no further comments. Yeah. All right, Joe. No questions. Yeah. Jeff. Um, I'm going to have to agree with John on this one. I think the side sign's kind of redundant. The front's fine. You, yeah. you see it coming in, and they also get the tower for the exposure on 95. You know, uh, if we're looking at reducing signage, I think that would be the one that I would say isn't really that important. Navigating through the parking lot, looking at this plan, you're already halfway through the lot to get there. You're in that yeah. side back lot. It's because you're going to that restaurant. You already know what's there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't no, think I don't think the sign on the side of the building is necessary. But that's not necessarily true because when you're in this parking lot, it also services all of these areas as well. So you almost you go in here. I'm sorry, I don't have it the bigger. So you come in in this entrance way, and you're looking for the Del Frisco sign. So you're you have to actually drive all the way around to then turn into the Del Frisco's parking lot. That is true. So it's, it's kind of like an odd shape. You know, there's no direct entrance into their particular site. You go into that common parking area and, and loop around to get to the Del Frisco. So you need that sign on that wall to direct them to the building. I disagree with you. And, it's, and it is visible from 95 and from uh, Route 3. When, when you go on the exit to get Route 3 North, you can see that sign, and that would just help on their advertising. Absolutely. I mean, restaurants have taken yeah. a Pull in that front space right there. This, the front sign would be right in front of you. No way there's no way there. But that's if, if you're in the area, but if you happen to be driving by and you just happen to see the restaurant there and then you didn't even know it was there, you can see it's advertising. It's really just their advertising. Right. And, the, and then because it's of the familiar. lush landscaping of this front facade, I mean, it's really, the building is really set back. And the landscaping is a product of, as they were developing, this is a part of the PD Development District, the planning board specifically requested all of this landscape and along the front, along the side of, of the Barnes and Nobles, it, you know, which is very nice, but at the same time, it, it masks the building that's set far back. I mean, restaurants have taken a huge hit with this pandemic, and so signage is especially important right now to make sure that these restaurants survive. And 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 um, you know, the signage is really important, especially with this particular site. And and just to add to that, each of the restaurants or the businesses in that strip closest to 95 has a sign on the rear the rear elevation for exposure. Jeff, any more comments? Um, I'm looking at that now. No, no more comments. Okay. Jeremy? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the lettering is very large, but I agree, it's set back. There's foliage in the way. I think especially that front sign, it looks, it looks good. I think it accomplishes what should be accomplished with the building. Um, and the parking lot is confusing. I've been in it. It's not a clean, straight drive. So I understand your want to have a sign on the side, but you've referenced um, 128 and just and Route 3. <laughs> and so, what does that? Si I'm just trying to understand what that sign on the side of the building gets you that the sign on the tower doesn't, because I feel like the sign on the tower has a lot more visibility from the highway. I don't necessarily disagree with potentially having a sign on the side and just feel it 48 inches tall that's quite a large sign if there's already something on the tower just yeah you know, i mean the tower the tower sign is really just a multi-tenant non-illuminated sign and if you're doing 65 70 down night uh, 95 you're not going to see it it's just it's with all the other signs up there if you're stuck in traffic and sitting there you'll read it and see it but it, it only has signs on two sides of that tower and um, 
it's really, uh, it's, it's a tenant panel. It's, it doesn't do a whole lot. You've got an eight inch letter up there and it, it, the panel's 12 inches tall, but you need to have space on the top and bottom of the letters, but it's really not, it doesn't do a whole lot of, uh, you know, what the sign on the side of the building would offer them for advertising and visibility. That's really what they need. And it is smaller than the sign on the front of the building. It's, it's really a smaller sign. It is at 48 inches, but I know we've had others in here and we are concerned because there are a lot of signs going into town as we've heard. So I, I don't know if there's any middle ground where maybe a, a smaller sign on that side or a sign over the door would be acceptable. But the, when you say 48 inches, that's just the S. I mean, it's really their, their font and logo um, is the overall height of the S, the, the actual T R E G and A are you know twelve inches tall. So you're not Jeremy you also? Got, I'm all set. All right. Um yeah, I don't I don't see a problem with this. I mean every every business is allowed signage on two sides at least, so I don't really I think with this being visible from the highway for them, I think it just adds, adds a level of need here. Um, I don't think it's actually overly large either. The 48 in is, inches is the S. The, the other letters are 14 inches. I mean, that's not near some of the signage that we've seen in the past, but um, those are my comments on it. Uh, this is a public hearing, so we'll open it up to the public. If there's anyone here that would like to speak on this matter, please come up to the microphone. All right, um, we'll leave it open for now. The <laughs> sounds like we're kind of split on this one again. So any of the comments from the board input? I think uh, the sign is necessary for navigational purposes. I think your point is well taken relative to the, the uh, seeing it from the, uh, the highway. And I think it's part of the brand to, to see it from the roadway and also from the parking lot, despite the fact that the other signs are there. So I'm in favor of it. All right, well, there aren't any other comments. We can take a motion. I don't know exactly where we are with that. Um, who are we on for this one? Who's uh, that's my you. Okay. Make a motion to approve the uh, special uh, sign permit for uh, 90 to 92 Middlesex Turnpike. Uh, consistent with the plans that have been Filed with the application, sign A, sign B, and sign C. The plan is dated January 22nd of 2022. Um, the restriction, the light restriction of 90 lumens per square foot, and that there be no other signs except uh, by further ruling of this uh, body. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Four. All right. All set. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. The next item on our agenda is a new hearing for signage for legal seafood as advertised. Okay. Um, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board for the record, Christine Hung, attorney at Reamer Bronstein, attorney for the applicant. With me tonight, I have um, Dennis Greenwood of Susan Design Architects and Anne Marie Escobar, who is the brand president of Legal Seafood. Um, so Legal Seafood has been at the Burlington Mall for over 37 years and they're a mainstay in the town. 
due in part to COVID and as, uh, as part of a change of ownership, they closed their restaurant back in 2021 um, in order to, um, and they're undergoing a renovation of the restaurant. They recently received planning board approval for some special permits um, to expand this um, addition. It's an enclosed addition of approximately 900 square feet. Um, the enclosed addition will provide year-round dining with an open-air concept and removable uh, uh, window panels. And so they are, before you, seeking relief to um, add that sign. It's the same sign, the iconic legal seafood sign that was has been, always been at the mall, um, but it's just a different categorization now. Instead of a wall sign, it's a marquee sign because it's gonna be placed on this decorative, architectural arm, so it's a different categorization of sign, but it is the exact same sign that has been there for the past 37 plus years. Um, we welcome any questions or comments that the board may have. All right, uh, Jeremy, I'll we'll start with you. <clears throat> so are you saying the sign's moving up a little or it's staying where it has been? So it's on, right now it's gonna be placed on, if you can see on that decorative right. arm. So it's considered a marquee sign. Um, so it's just placed differently. I would say it's, it may be going up a foot um, from where it is now. Not, not that much, but it's gonna be suspended on the arm. Okay. Just for 3D visualization, is it looking like it's off the building then? Like, cause it's a marquee or I'm just trying yes. to understand. Yes, it is off of the building. Okay. And I, I think I read that the cod was going to move as well. Is that considered part of the sign? No, the cod is going to stay. Okay. In the exact same place. No further questions. All right, uh, Jeff. I'm trying to get a different view on it. So it, it's going to be completely independent from the building. That's where the lights are underneath it, the dotted lights? Yes. Those are gonna be set back further from where the sign is. Right, those are on the building. Okay, so that's a, it's a freestanding sign on top of a roof. Correct. I'm, I'm not really in favor with lifting the sign up. But that, that's just my two cents that way. I, I wanna see what everyone else has to say. No further comments. Joe? No comments at this time. Mark? So can you describe the, the lighting that you have? Because it looks like, I don't know, from the one I'm looking at that you gave, uh, gave us in your application, it looks like there are like small lights within the letters. Correct. They are. They're, they're LED bulbs inside. This is a aluminum channel letter. Okay. The recessed channel, and in that channel are individual LED. They did change it from incandescent to LED bulbs to be more energy efficient. And, um, but yes, they're just LED bulbs. It's the same look that's been there for years. So if, I, if, I, if I may, yeah, for one second, right my apologies for interrupting you. Uh, my name is Dennis Greenwood from Sousa Design. So I'm just going to kind of give you a brief overview of it. So they kind of spoke about the marquee sign. I think what you're referencing is the lighting behind it on the on the building. Well, the so lighting behind it, but blue. also in the channel. There's yeah, so it's, it's a twofold thing. So we're, we're adding panels behind, the blue panels. Uh, Simon asked us to help renovate and bring the facade of that mall, you know, and kind of match the contemporary nature of what they're doing for their renovations. So that's part of the move with us raising it as well, as we're trying to lighten Right. That whole facade, so those heavy awnings that went across that facade previously, we removed those. The only signage that's left now is just that marquee sign that was existing. So that was part of the idea of raising it, lightening that piece, and giving it a contemporary feel. Sure. And so are you saying the lettering is all the same size? Of it's the exact same see? sign. Exact same sign. And it's relocating. So you're not recreating it? It's not recreating it. Exact same sign. Just changing the lighting. Yeah, it's yeah. just going to be a watt stop. It's just going to be the watt stop, right? Right. right. And you're moving it up high in the building. 
I have, I have nothing more at this time. All right, John. I'll actually like this one. There's always one. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. I like that. For a while. I like this one. I like this one. Yeah. I actually have something further on it. The the sign's going up six feet in height. Right now it's currently at 14 feet above ground and now it's gonna be, the base of it's gonna be at 20 feet. Yes, it's getting raised about five foot six from where it is currently. But you didn't have that facade before though, right? No, so there was a small bump out existing that was out about four feet. We added another 12 feet out. So previously it was on a it was a more of a parapet to answer your question. So you're saying, how did you yep. arrive at 20 feet when it shows 14? It was a parapet previously. In the new addition, that gets simplified. We don't have that lip around the entire perimeter of that enclosure. So that lowered a little bit. Um, but overall, the sign is raising approximately 66 inches. Yeah, I'm just not in favor of how it's being lifted up higher than that roof height. but. The extra six feet. If it was sitting right where it was before, and that marquee followed the top of the building, I'd have no problem. But other than that, I have no more comments. All right. Um, I'm actually just going to follow up on a couple of comments that some of the other board members made. So, this structure that this is sitting on, is it attached to the building? Yes. It is. It's part of the building. It's not standalone. Those posts come down and rest directly on these two. That it's building. up on posts. Yes. So it's not part of the building. It's well, it's attached to the building. It's attached. It's, to the it's attached, sitting on the building on the yeah. roof. But that makes it there's nothing point. behind it. Right. No, I understand that. But it's it's not it, it's attached to the building. It's not a standalone yeah, sign. Yeah, not like a freestanding sign. Yeah, that's where I was going with that. Um, so, how far off the wall does this sit? Like, it's not a wall sign, obviously it's not on the wall, so I'm just curious how far out from from the wall it is. Like eight feet. Well, so if, if you're asking about the, are you asking about the wall where you see the blue? Yeah. Or are you asking about, so that is about, it's 12 plus five, it's 17 feet back. So we're already, our sign is already proud of that. It's not on that wall existing now because we already have a small bump out existing. We just the depth of that bump out increased, so we brought the sign out with it. Okay. Another 12 feet, because that's what we, that's what right. we knew. But it doesn't sit out from the lower portion of the building? Only by a couple inches. It's gonna be more or less flush. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, uh, and just to follow up, because I don't know that the comment was really quite answered, so on, on our rendering here, on these channel letters, it's showing little white dots. We're not going to see little white dots within the channel letters. It might just we'll be white dots. You within the channel letters. Yes, that's existing. Marquee that's sign. by design. By design and as existing. Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make it clear that that's what we were talking about. Again, I don't. I don't have a problem with it. I just um, want to clarify those points. Um, this is a public hearing, so we'll put this out to the public. If there's anyone here that would like to speak in favor or against this proposal, please come up to the microphone. All right. Um, further comment from the board before we close the public hearing? Yeah, this is the the previous sign being reused, just yep. put in a different correct. location. Correct. Yep, correct. I'm looking at the street view right now. Right now it's on the same plane as the COD currently and it's moving up. So, no further comments. All right, uh, there's no other comments. We'll take a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Five zero. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, now we will take a motion uh, for the application. Make a motion to approve the special sign permit for legal seafood uh, consistent with the plans that were filed with the application. 
dated March 23rd, 2002, with uh, the restriction of lighting to 90, uh, 90 lumens per square foot, and that there be no other signs except uh, by authorization of this board. Anything further? So, second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. Thank All you second. very much. Thank you. Now, thank you very much. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you, guys. All right. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is a new hearing for signage for Moo, as advertised. The applicant here. If you could please introduce yourself and give us an overview of the application. Yes, uh, Ed Spinney from uh, SignArt in Malden, Massachusetts. Um, here for uh, uh, Landana slash Moo, our new um, venue that we were looking to uh, to make some changes to the existing wall signage. Um, at this point, uh, the signs are all on Donner and we want to change them to move. Um, we size the signs significantly less than what's uh, allowed by right. Um, but due to the last uh, meeting that you guys had, we, that's why we're here because you said no additional wall signs without approval for you guys. So we tried to be very professional about it and Moo has a very uh, high-end look and we're using a uh, special black material that uh, this is a channel letter with uh, LED inside and it will actually light up white at night. Uh, it will be black during the day so it, it goes uh, very discreet on the building. Um, and then we have uh, a back entrance from the back parking lot that currently has a lawn donner and we are looking to uh, put a moo there and those are just non-lit half inch thick uh, black acrylic letters um, and if uh, if you take a look at our second page on our front sign you'll notice that the letters are two foot ten for the one letter which is the M the O's are significantly less the, uh, the branding is, uh, the dot, dot, dot is actually lower, so if we take this a big square, that's why you have the three feet there. It's really not three feet, it's just offset, but that's the branding. Uh, we have three other locations uh, throughout New England, uh, and we're certainly open to uh, any questions or comments. All right, uh, John. So what, what's the square footage of the move sign? The new one? Um, we didn't do the square footage because the by rights were height and maximum width. So what's the square? What was the square footage of the Landana sign? Do you know? Uh, we did not take the square footage of that. The Landana sign was significantly smaller in height letters. Yeah. Um, but um, we're not that much taller, actually. The O's are the same height as Landana. Do you have the dimensions, not the square footage for Londana? No, we didn't take any square footages because uh, the building inspector didn't but, tell us we but needed But like the height footage. and length of the existing Londana sign, do you know what that but is? We do not have that. That was, <clears throat> these are old photos. This wasn't available to us when we did our drawings. If you kind of count some of the bricks and the moon yeah. looks wider. The moo just looks like it's a bigger sign. The moo is much, much wider because the alphabet is, but if you look at the height of an O on a brick, and then you look at the height of the L in Landana on the brick, you'll see that the L is almost a full brick, and the O's are just about a full brick if you split them up. We're very close in, in size, but it's difficult to take one branding and make it look like another branding. We are set pretty far back off the road there. Um, we are going with a very discreet color. We're not lighting this up very bright. It's, it's, uh, it's, gonna, it's a black product that will light up white, but it's not like perfectly white. If you put it next to white, you wouldn't think it's white. Um, this is not obtrusive. It's uh, not in a neighborhood area. We have a huge parking lot in the front, so we just need some visibility. Um, when you pull into the parking lot, 
uh, and when you're driving down the road, it's a pretty quick road there. Um, so um, we, we're well below what the, the code requires. Uh, we might be slightly above the Landana, but it's difficult to make two brands with a different look like that. So we thought we did a, I mean, half of our sign is the four dots. I'm Peter Baker, I'm the general manager. I was uh, the acting gen GM of uh, Landana. And again, we just need the uh, people coming by. You know, after they pass by Mercedes, it's hard to go ahead and get anybody's attention to look to their right, we're so far back. Um, we have a chef owner, he's very eccentric, and the, you know, the four periods are, uh, when I miss one, I hear about it. Yep. So it is certainly part of the um, logo. Um, and again, it kind of skews what uh, I think, you know, we had Montana as all lettering, but the, um, you know, the periods in the logo kind of throw things off a little bit. Um, so, and the back entrance one is really just, you know, when it's raining in that parking lot, we don't want people to walk unnecessarily all the way through to the front, uh, get soaked. It's really just to go ahead and, and uh, draw attention to the back. John, anything else? Well, uh, yeah, uh, as far as the back signs go, I have no problem with okay. it. I don't really have a problem with the front sign. I like the fact that it's going to be white at night. And then I, I see the subtleness in it and all that. But when I, this picture is driving me crazy <laughs> because I can see the Landana and then I see Moo, and this Moo just looks so much bigger to me. Well, the problem is I didn't blow the land in a picture up to the same yeah, size, probably. which perhaps yeah. if you kind of look at the bricks, you'll see we're really kind of close. Um, but there again, it's, you know, was Landana actually large enough to be seen from that distance? It was pretty small to be seen. It really wasn't intrusive, I suppose. Uh, we tried to stay high end and professional and non intrusive, so even though there are no neighbors. But we, we do have a difficult time when you come by the, uh, the dealership there to be seen. Um, I, just pulled up the, right. I just pulled up the previous permits on that. The previous, the current Landana signs that are there, the original one was 24 square feet, and what you're proposing now is 69 square feet. Is that correct? Only because you put a big square around our little dots. That's now. what we do for every sign. Now. That's so you how can't they just pick and choose yours. That's what we do for every sign. But we're That's still well yeah. below the square footage allowed. And it was one and a half feet in height, and you're proposing two foot ten slash three feet, whatever. And it was only 16 feet long versus the 23 feet now. We're we're proposing uh, two foot ten for an M. The, yep. the O's are two feet. The current sign now is a foot and a half. Foot and a half, right. And which we didn't feel was visible enough for the distance and the speed of the traffic driving by. Um, there again, we didn't max out the width, we didn't max out the height in, in what's... Operate, operationally, you know, that's what boots on the ground in the restaurant deal with. You know, people drive by. You know, which uh, we drove by Landana and we're like, oh wait, we didn't see you. Know, we didn't see you. You know, um, we need to we need to be recognized. You know, it needs to be large enough for people to go ahead and recognize uh, what we are. The um, the sign you have at the street, are you going to be replacing that as well? That's already you, permitted. That's uh, already through, permitted through building. Yes. Okay. Um, this this we feel is not overly huge for the frontage. And we don't feel it's obtrusive and, and, and like ridiculously large. We tried to be middle of the road with it, and we didn't want to come in here with three, three and a half foot, four foot letters and things. So we feel that it looks pretty clean on the front of that building. That's why we blew it up big enough to, to see a clean look. Um, we feel we, we really need that. Restaurants, is, you know, you're going to hear the story a million times for restaurants. So it's been difficult for the past few years with restaurants. And, and our name is a little unique. You know, it's uh, a little monochromatic. You know, the three O's and four periods don't, don't break out very well. You know, uh, the statement with the O is, or the M is a statement. Um, you know, that's what kind of carries uh, Beacon Hill, that's what carries Seaport. Um, 
again, those are you know distinctly different than a freestanding uh, restaurant like we have. All right, um, John, you were all set, right? I'm all set. Mark? I don't know what to do, but I'm all set. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you that uh, because of where that building is located, right behind the, you know, further back from the church, and, you know, you're, you're contending with uh, Mercedes, uh, I, I think you need something more. an issue with it either. All right. Jeff, any further comments? Um, no. Jeremy? Um, I, <clears throat> from here, I'll tell you, I think it's appropriate. Um, first time I went, I drove right by. Okay. So did my wife. I didn't live in town. We were going on a date, and we both drove right by it, and we laughed about it in the parking lot. So clearly it wasn't big enough um, all those years ago, and I think uh, while this is a large sign, because of the waiting you know, it's not too obtrusive because of the way you're lighting it. I think it's appropriate. Appreciate that. All right. All the comments. Um, is the current sign right now lighted? It was ba it was backlit. It was backlit. So they were solid letters and ba and backlit. Yeah. And why wouldn't you want to do that again? I, th I thought that was kind of a nice. Uh, this is actually a new method, and it's a classier look than the backlit, and different than most. Yeah. So, like, if you drive by it today it, during the day, you're going to see that it's black, and then when you come at four o'clock in the winter and you're going home, you're going to take a second look at it. We're looking to attract that attention again because now it's white. You're going to go, "Hey, I thought that was black." Uh, it's just something different, but yet classy and upscale. Um, and something I don't think we've done or I've seen anything in Burlington like this, actually. Uh, How are the lumens getting measured? By the LEDs themselves, or is it getting measured off of the face of when it's changing from black to white? You would measure it off the face. So during dusk, it actually appears to be slightly gray because the ambient light outside isn't dark enough yet so that when the lights go on inside, it appears to be gray. So it actually changes from black to gray to white. And if I put a white channel letter next to it, you'd go, oh, my God, <laughs> because yeah. that's how much brighter a white channel letter is. But with no white next to it, it's perfectly white looking. It's really a, a cool, classy, uh, smooth look. Uh, it certainly will, will fit in the Lumen situation for here, no question. Um, Do you have a photo of it or rendering with the, what it would look like? Uh, I did not do a rendering of white because it, it's never exactly, it's too white on a piece of paper than it, it gets. Uh, we do have uh, multiple units like this throughout the state uh, with, with other clients. Uh, we, um, there was a company, Explorator, in Boston uh, at the Masonic building. There was a coffee shop that had this exact same type of letter, different alphabet, different typeface. But the black whites, um, mm -hmm. uh, and it was very clean and crisp and clear looking. How big right. is that? How big is the sign out in the parking lot, the front one, freestanding one? Yeah, I'm hang on. Kind of interested about that I was, myself. Is what was the question? The, the sign in the parking lot. How is? Trying to look at the decision. 120 by 24. How is that being approved through the building department and not having to come in front of us? It wasn't addressed in the last, uh, according to the building inspector, it wasn't addressed. Uh, you guys only addressed uh, that the wall signs had to come to you. Um, we are at the square footage that uh, 20 square feet for a pole sign in town. And um, he said it didn't follow in. He. Uh, I actually have the uh, the reading from you guys, and it, you you specifically said wall signs. Okay. So yeah, that's how. This is a lit sign too. 120 by 24 for that. Just has Mo on it. What are we What are we looking at there? Yes, your permits. 
So, so I can explain that to you as well. I actually have a drawing I can show you as well. That'd be great if you could pass that around because yep. when we take into consideration the signage, try to take into consideration all the signage on site. Well, that's what we thought. And then the building inspector said that the old, uh, um, whatever you call it, the, the, the variances only mentioned wall signs. So he said, no problem, I can give you the permit for the... So what we have is, is a, uh, a ground sign that is uh, only lit letters, so they're called push-through letters. I would just like that back if you don't mind. Sure, thank you. Um, so it's a satin black, um, and the letters are white. Uh, there are LEDs inside, and the letters are actually pushed out like an inch through the aluminum face, so the face is all non-lit. So it's not like a blare. There again, we tried to stay really classy. It's not a blaring, you know, sign that lights up. It's a, a neat, clean sign, and it uh, fits all of the uh, criteria, and the building inspector told us it didn't have to come before you because it wasn't in the last decision. Is the current sign lighted right now? Yes. The one on the street? Yes. It is? Well, uh, it is wired to be lit, but it hasn't been lit for uh, a year or two. A year or two. Yeah. Okay. But it is a lit sign, and it was lit. It just became into disrepair, and because they were doing a change in the pandemic and they've kind of been closed for a while, they just didn't fix it. Okay. Uh, but yes, the power is there, the lighting was there, and it is lit. I gotta tell you, this change, that changes my opinion of this quite a bit, actually. So that's showing the existing size of the signage and then the new oh, whoa. proposed. That, uh, yeah, the new sign is a joke. It's much, it snows much six larger. Inches. It's, no, it's just the thing is six inches right. off the ground. It snows six inches, it's, it's covered. 12 inches, forget it. When the plow goes by, it's gone. Sorry. So, we have a plowing issue that goes goes on there with that, and we only brought it up. It's only six feet high. It's only as tall as a person, me. It's not very high whatsoever. Right, but it's also... It's only the width it is because of the, the logo and the branding. But it's 20 square feet, which is the code. Um, building inspector had no issue with it, and I don't know how that affects the building that's set way back, but... But your argument, your argument for this big moose sign on the roof is the fact that people driving by might not see right. the sign. And we're trying to catch have a sign out on the street. We're trying to mm -hmm. catch everybody in every way we can because it's a yeah. difficult yeah. location. Right. Very difficult location. Yeah. That's a freestanding sign. They're in a PDD. Oh, that falls under that? Well, they're in the IG as well. Where IG? Oh, oh is that? There's no PDD? You're nope. not in the PDD? We're all then? IG is what I was okay. told. Yeah, the IG, it's allowed either way. I thought that was the PDD. That's, that was a big issue with the Mercedes Benz. Either way, the IG allows for freestanding signs. Mercedes there in the church. This sign, the current sign, it says current sign being replaced. That's not well. This isn't apparently under our jurisdiction, yeah, but I guess not. Take this no, in, but you can still take it into consideration, into consideration for the other sign. Side. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, honestly, this should have been part of the package, even if it wasn't in our jurisdiction. Um, speaking generally on it, you know, again, for me, it's this, it's really the safety issue to what that out. One, we want to be branded. I'm not going to hide that from anybody. That's what we are, and that's what we want to go ahead and present to everybody. You know, we want to put the sign, you know, we want to put Moo on the on the front of the building. Um, taking in consideration, it's a little weird in its name. Let's be honest about it. But, you know, 
in that swale coming off coming uh, off of 95 through Cambridge Street passing by uh, the Mercedes dealership it comes up on you so fast and you know people pass it or they try to make that turn into that parking lot after the church then coming out of town you know you're in that swale we're going you're going downhill you're in that swale there and that outer sign you know needs to grab your attention because you only have about a hundred feet a hundred yards let's and that's at best to go ahead and capture someone's attention you know and we see it you know our valet our valet hears about it you know oh wow we, we had to turn around we had to come by you you know we were whipping down you know Cambridge Street and you know we need to grab people's attention in order to be safe in some respects mind you I am <laughs> I am the GM and I want people to make it there but you know that that's the discussion that we've had uh, internally about you know how do we grab people and make sure that they uh, you know they make it into that parking lot and I I hear what you're saying and I think that this sign on the street which would, would accomplish that, but then taking the next step further with this sign on the street, I don't think you need to have a larger sign on the front of the building. If th this, is, this sign for the street is what's gonna get people's attention driving up and down the road. So the argument for the larger sign on the building to get people's attention up and down the road kind of doesn't play out as much after, hear after seeing this. Well, when you turn your head, if you can't read the letters because they're so small from the distance, then you should you should be looking at this sign then. Coming what up and down the do road. What time do you open? open it, we're open from five until nine or ten. So really, you know, it's going to be at night. See your customers, right? So True. Yeah. yeah. So the signs. If you if you did reduce that. That sign on the face. I don't think it would make that much of a difference. Well, it depends what you're looking to reduce it. We, they say we have a two foot zero, two foot oh. Everybody already has agreed whether they saw that full sign or not that Landana was kind of small. So yeah. we didn't go that much. I bigger. agree with you, Landana was. Too small. I, I wouldn't even notice the right people don't notice that, it. that was a restaurant if, if I didn't know how good it, it was. <laughs> so I, I don't think that we're reaching very far with huge signage. This is I leave it to the rest of the board. I, do, I don't have a, a big objection. I, I think that we, we're trying to upsize the, the existing pole sign a little bit. We're trying to upsize the existing wall sign a little bit, but not a huge amount. I mean, based on, I realize you have jurisdiction over it, but based on the ordinances, we're considerably below uh, the height and width of, of what's allowed. So we don't think we're asking a ridiculous amount and the restaurant business is tough these days. And, and people are changing their brands and changing their names and remodeling and trying to do whatever they can to stay in business and stay afloat and stay open. It's a difficult area. You can drive by it very quickly. Um, we certainly don't want to have issues with people not pulling in and stopping fast to try to make that turn. Um, and we think that the, the pole sign is a comp will accomplish that. And, and when you're driving and you're not paying attention, which a lot of people today don't, and you just la di da look to your left, you'll see our building sign and you'll actually see it and read it. Won't be blaring at you, but you'll see it and you'll read it. So those are our thoughts. Mm -hmm. So when you say that these signs are compliant, yes. what what are you basing that off of? These wall signs. The, uh, the regulations on IG, but for some reason the last uh, for some I mean the building inspector, you know, and I don't know who is happy with who, but totally agrees that, you know, there's a set of ordinances for signage and then you guys get involved and, and you take total control of all the signage so the ordinances should, should go away or 
you should do your thing, and, and I don't want to get in the middle of any of that. We, we just want to try to do business and have a good restaurant in town and be seen and be visible reasonably and professionally. Um, and and uh, um, But the ordinances allow us to have uh, up to a six-foot sign in, uh, tall in that area. I mean, we're not even at three feet. We're at two foot, 34 inches. They allow you to be right from end to end of the building. We're not even close to the end of the building on either side. Um, so we feel that it's not a huge, obtrusive looking sign on the front of that building. And then you add the considerations of the depth of the parking lot and the speed of the traffic. And we do want to be seen if you're not paying attention to a road sign and you look left and somebody goes, it's, you know, if you and I are driving together and we're talking and you go, oh, hey, there's Moo. You know, you might not have seen the pole sign. It's not like the pole sign's a 20 feet high and a giant pole sign. It's a small little sign. And, you know, so in today's world, we just are trying to get every little bit of advertising possible and stay professional and stay clean um, and, and neat with it. By right, it says right here, maximum of six square feet in size, not no, six not feet. not on the IG. Height. I'm reading it up right off of what you submitted. Right. IG, uh, 131421, sign shall be six feet or less in height. Number 13.1.4.2.1, wall signs. I'm reading six square feet right here. This is current off the website. And I, I went over all of these signs with the building inspector and he almost gave me the permit until he realized that there was your jurisdiction on the walls from a previous, a previous thing. So I have a copy here. In 100 of, feet of residential. This is page 13-2 of town building zone bylaws. I don't know what page you have. Well, we're just referencing the previous permit where it's referencing section 6.7.4 of the zoning bylaw, which... Well, this is the IG district. I checked on that. Yeah. Yes. This is the correct one. So we spent some serious time with the building inspector to make sure that, that we did everything right, and at least we thought, anyway. Um, and if you go down further in that same article, it tells you that the pole sign can be 20 square feet, and that's exactly what it is. Um, and it's not a 20 square foot fully lit sign with a white Lexan face blaring at you. It's, it's a non-lit and just the word M-O-O with the four dots is lit. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really arguing about the sign. If the building inspector says it's compliant, then that, that's fine with me. My, my argument is that if you have that sign, you don't need the, the one on the wall to be as large as you're proposing. That's my argument. I mean, my suggestion would be to bring the O's down to the 18 inches that the Landana sign was previously. I, I mean, Landana has, I had never really counted it, but it's nine letters, and it's all, you know, a traditional block. You know, what we kind of look at as is Moo is this different setup. That's what kind of, again, is the brand, is uh, unique in itself in its name. Uh, you know, so elongate the O's and put four periods on it. Um, you know, and again, it just visually looks different to I think everybody that we're that. So yes, we do want the you know the M to be prominent, but uh, you know the lack of volume of letters beyond that, uh, followed by you know four periods, um, doesn't take up a lot of that square footage. You know, it elongates it, but we're not trying to go end to end. Um, I just think it's important where we are now. You know, many people approach us, and you know, Wandana kind of gets did get kind of lost. Maybe it was designed that it was white on white, but uh, since it was backlit, when we were here during the when you are there in the evening, yes, it's very prominent. But throughout the day, you know, it bleeds away. A lot of people, you know, we hear from oh, you know, didn't know where you were. Or, um, well, I never kind of noticed where you were, or where you are. <coughs> Again, that's kind of why we went with, you know, black on our uh, cream facade to go ahead and stick out. Uh, again, the branding part is the, you know, there's a lot of empty space in there. 
Uh, we don't think that that's uh, too uh, obtrusive. And again, to me, it's really, you know, my job is to, you know, it's the hospitality part, you know, is to put butts in seats too. And, um, you know, if I hear people that are driving by our restaurant, that's, you know, counterintuitive to, uh, to the hospitality that we, we want to provide. Um, you know, and I think that, that kind of reflects what we're trying to do. We feel like we've seen the experience of Londana with the smaller lettering, you know, people missing us, and we just don't want that to happen again while we're uh, moving into rebranding. We need it. You know, we, uh, you know our, our, we were doing more takeout than we did, you know, people coming into that restaurant um, at one particular time, and, you know, we need to make sure that people make it there. I, I agree with everything you're saying, and, and you know I'll take you know what the other board members say as well. But I was okay with the size of the sign on the wall until I saw this. I think everything that you're saying is accomplished by this sign. So I think to have the larger sign on the wall is is, is more than what is necessary. That's I mean I. I mean just for scope, you know, driving back, you know, if you if you drive that way tonight, if, you know, you're going to see the leasing sign for the building that's beside us before you're gonna see our sign. Which is bigger than the sign we're putting up on the road. That's at least, that's over six feet tall, six feet tall and beyond it's our, our two, area it's of- square feet <coughs> and it covers our sign as, as today. But you're gonna pick that up before you pick up our sign at all. We're putting up a 20 square foot sign, which is not huge. It's not fully lit, just the little letters, which the letters are not huge on that. And like he just said, I didn't even think of that. You drive by now and there's a 32 square foot Felice sign that's blocking our sign. It's not on our property, it's on the next door neighbor's property. But when you're coming from town here, going that way, blocks our sign. Because our sign is so tiny and so small. So we're truly just trying to survive and not be ridiculously obtrusive or any huge, huge stuff here. I mean, when, when your permanent sign is less square foot than a real estate sign, that's, that tells you a little something, you know? The real estate guys are getting signs too big. Well, look, that's also <laughs> on a lit temporary sign. Temporary sign. It's been right. up there for a year. All right, I think we're it's not lit either. I don't, I don't, I haven't seen it at night, so I don't know if they put, uh, uh, some guys are putting uh, the, uh, yeah, the lit lighting on the sign from. Uh, um, I use that as the example. 69 foot right. square. square. We're, we're kind of going in circles here. Yeah. 69 square foot sign uh, is what you're proposing. Sorry. Let's, let's let me put this back to the board. What? Let's see what directions we're thinking of going with this, and then we can put this to a, mo uh, a motion. I don't think we're getting anywhere any further here. Any other comments? Right now, I see the M is. Uh, 34 inches. 34 inches taller than the Landana L. Your rows oh, no. are about no. six inches taller than the Landana. No, the M is not 34 inches taller. It's 34 inches tall, and the Landana was 18. 12 inches. 18 minus 32. So it's 14 inches taller, the M. The M's four And the O's tall. are probably six inches taller. Right, or less, yeah, five or six inches taller. I mean, if, you know, certainly we need signage there. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to argue and fight. We, we're trying to do what we think is right. If we need to shrink it a little, I just think shrinking it all the way down to 18 is pretty small for the distance and visibility. Well, there you go. Let's find a, conf let's find a compromise I mean, yeah. within that. Even the, the rear sign, you, you're looking at bigger. Your current rear sign is 8 inches, and you're proposing 10. It was 96 inches. <coughs> it was 8 feet long. My rear sign move is smaller than Londana. Yes. yes. And I, it's taller, I, but it's not as wide. And I felt it should be smaller because this is just to tell people you don't have to walk around yeah. the front. So I made it smaller. I'm, I'm just looking at it as a mount of signage. 
I mean, if we had a, if we could keep the front and get rid of the back, we'd probably be willing, more willing to do that than give up the front size um, if we had to. But we're just doing that for the clients to, to not walk from the back parking lot to the front. And that's an unlit sign. And that's unlit, yes. Unlit. It's a half inch thick uh, matte black acrylic. You won't know what it's yeah. made out of, but that's what I'm making it up. It's a, uh, there again, it's a classy look. All the finishes are going to be uh, satin or matte on the building slash pole. Um, I don't know. For me, yeah. I mean, for me, reducing the size of the wall sign in the front, you know, and I'm not saying it has to go. I, I don't think the M needs to go down to the 18 that the Landana was. I was, you know, thinking more along like the O's and keep everything in proportion. But even if we dropped it down to say 20 instead of 24 and keep everything else in proportion. It's still larger than the Landana size sign, plus more signage than you had before out on the street. I think that's. Uh, I think you're getting more than you had before, so I think it's in these blocks for you. But I'll take the, the current Landana signs 24 square feet. Well, sometimes the square footage is hard to judge. Yeah. I mean, right now our O's are about 20. Four inches. Mm -hmm. I mean, how about if we made our O's the size of the total height of the block, just like the Landana, and wherever the M sits, it sits. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you want to bring it down to that, um, that works that for me. Fair? Yeah, the current I mean, Landana. That seems sign. like a reasonable compromise. Yeah, the current okay. Landana sign is 16 inches. I thought it was it's 18, 18 inches. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's 18, 18. Yeah. which is a block. I got it's it. the yeah. full block. Yeah. Okay. I got that off of I, the I, I found Landana too small on I the know. building. Like I mentioned, I think, you know, I understand going for a compromise. I think the 18 would be good. I think the sign out front does help the, help yep. the, the freestanding sign, but I still think you need something the size of the Landana or more just so it can be seen. It yeah, is set so back. It, it is a darker point. building. It is not, as you say, bright <laughs> light if that is true. Oh, it's not. It doesn't yeah. sound too obtrusive. And the Mercedes dealership's really bright. You're not, oh. in, in my mind, it's not adding light pollution to the area. Um, and if you look at their signage, they there's... have a huge wall sign and a huge pole yeah, sign. Yeah, I read 16 feet. Yeah. 16 feet. Yeah. Yes. And the so, pole sign is 24 square feet, not 20. I think it's reasonable to go more for that 18 to find a compromise, personally. For the O's. For the O's. And size everything off that. It's my opinion. Oh, All right. Um, how, how do we? Well, we we state that if we don't know that if the M is going to be bigger than the O's, if we're going, if they want to go with a uh, eighteen inch O, what would the M be? We don't know, but we, we don't. Just, if we you spec it out as the, the O, the M is the M. Inspector can do the math. It's the it's the logo. So whatever, the, if you say you want an eighteen inch O, whatever that blows up to is what it blows up to. It's certainly less than what it is now, for sure. Um, we can go down instead of up. I would go down. I'd be okay with that as long as it comes down some. I may be happy to go ahead and have the O's be quote unquote on the block line. Does that make sense? So the O's would cover one of those blocks that you see. The M will be about 30 inches. But the M would be, you yeah. know. Capitalized at 30. Um, 30. Yeah, I was going to say, if you want to pick a height for the M, we could do that. Yeah, so that, that's what I'm going to figure out right now. Four inches to be if we bring to the M to 30 right inches, that would yeah. probably work. Okay. What is, what's the height you have for these O's right now? Where you show on the two foot ten? I have to be honest, I don't have that precisely because I don't have my computer on me and I didn't know that we were oh. going to get that detail. So oh. I, I was going to do the math for you right now and yeah. give it to you. Yeah. Okay. But if we went down to a 30 inch instead of a 34 inch M, then the O's would be appropriate. We're not changing our branding. No. So as you tell us to. Well, you're at, the M is 30. The M is 34 right now. Right. If we drop four inches off of it, that's a pretty significant drop. You're dropping four inches off the O, which brings it from 24. It really wouldn't bring an exact four well, because be it like doesn't six inches. that way. If we're looking for, six, for 18 inch O's. 
than just yeah. say Dana Six Jones. Inches. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, <laughs> and just keep it in proportion. And, and the M is the M. Right at that line? Yeah, we can write it that way. It's, it's definitely got to stay to proportion the building because it's will be able to so. keep it that way. That's easier. Okay. Uh, we'll take a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. All right. We'll take a motion for anyone that wants to attempt it. Make the motion to approve the uh, special sign permit for the move. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I had opened it to the public earlier. Maybe you weren't here. I was at the end of the time. Oh, all right. You did open it. Um, no, yeah, no, you're right. I'm sorry. I thought we had opened it to the public. Um, you may have done it. I may have done it. Take a, we'll take a motion to reopen the public make hearing. A for mo the motion to reopen the public hearing. Second. Okay. Motion is made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. All right. Yeah, please. Sorry uh, if you'd like to comment on this. I can answer a lot of questions, but I just had some other Please introduce yourself. Um, Guy Moore. I live across the street from the restaurant diagonally on 1 Arlington Road. So I'm a neighbor. Welcome, neighbor. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought the back, the back sign was uh, 10 feet by 83 feet, but those are inches, so that takes care of that. <laughs> and it's not lit up, so thank God for that. Um, I like that you're reducing the sign a, a smidgen in the front. They do need that sign on the wall because you can never see that restaurant. Hey. I mean, I'm against the restaurant being there, but I, um, for your advertising, uh, a little bit more. Um, the lumens. Yes. So the sign is black letters move. I, didn't, I don't have any uh, peripheral yes. light information. Yeah. So the, the letters are, are black material. And the white will light up at night. So the letters will change to gray during the dusk and then whiter during night. But oh, the not, letters are turning white. Yes, but not 100% white. Yeah. So the lumens coming, are you across the street from the parking lot? Di or diagonally. Uh, I'm across from the Mercedes-Benz uh, dealership. So this will be as discreet or discreeter than what was there lit. You know how it was a glow around the edge? Yeah, it was, it was nothing from the Landana. Well, there was years ago on the Landana. It was a glow around the edge, but you couldn't see it there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is going to be very similar. It was dark. You didn't even know the, the place was open. Right. Yeah. We're going sleek. We're going... This is going to be considerably less than the 90 lumens because it's not going to be pure white. So I had a side question on uh, lumens. So are you familiar with the church, the International Church of yeah. God, whatever it is, that sign? Is that... With then lumens, because I can read a book in my house with the lights off at night. Oh boy! So signage that doesn't come in front of this board, there's nothing in the bylaw that regulates the yeah. signage. That sign did come before the board, though. Did it? Yeah, I know it did. I was sat on the board. It's like it's like super did. super bright. I could get I, a tan from it, maybe. But we never we never talked to lumens before. Back, yeah, before back then, sign we never did. Right. And there's no way that sign. The LED. That sign is bright, though. Very bright. You know, Brightest kidding. thing around. Uh, yeah. Unfair in the neighborhood. And they also have it on when they're not open. It so was. Oh, there should have been. I. I, 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 th I thought there was when the variance was granted that they did have a time mm -hmm. things on it. It might be. They may have a timer, but then it should only your, your sign should only be on uh, when you're open. Like if you're closed at ten or midnight, the sign should go off. Yeah. We do. It's on a timer. It's on a timer. But, but do we have bylaws for that? It's not in the bar law, but we can make a condition of that. Yeah. We can make a condition. I don't think there's a law for it. Yeah. So, so yeah, the church does shut it off. I think at midnight could, could be earlier, but it shouldn't even be on if they're not open. I know they have to advertise, but you know the sign is there during the day. Anyway, that's just a little side side track there. What a lot of towns do is they do one hour after closing and one hour before yeah. opening, mm -hmm. which which really makes it easy because yeah. when the church closes, they're not open at midnight. Sometimes they are. At midnight? Okay. Yeah. Oh. For us, we have. have shindigs every now and then. <laughs> For us, we're going to have that you know, on the regular timer that we have. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so it was just the so, lumens thing, and uh, you can't do nothing about the noise or anything else like that. So I think that. Uh, well, hopefully, we're going to get a very classy. Make it to that timer. Oh, yeah, noise. Classy people are uh, well, hard to find. <laughs> it's kind of classy. It's and you're not having a, the most expensive restaurant uh, town. flashing lights or anything no, like that? No, no, no. Because inside the Merce Mercedes, Mercedes dealership, they, they have uh, 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 advertising inside that flashes, and, I, and that flashes in my house. I don't know if it's still on right now, but that was like the most aggravating thing ever. 
I didn't complain. It's not for growth. All right. I think I think that was it. You guys have done a good job. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry about that. If we missed the, that, so we will go back and take another motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion is made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Five zero. So okay. I have. I just have one comment. What, what's you said that the, the uh, lighting is on a timer right now? An hour before. Yeah. Yes. Opening so, an hour after closing. Hour before. Opening and an hour after closing is what is normal throughout other cities. I'm not saying that's what we have to do. <clears throat> that's not sufficient. Yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. yeah it's we don't want people coming. Dial and when we shut the sign off, then they know we're closed. You know. Touch that dial twice. Twice a year, uh, daylight savings time, and that's it. All right, so we'll take a motion if anyone wants to make a motion to um, approve special sign permit for Moo uh, consistent with the, uh, the plans that were. Filed with the application dated March 2nd of 2022 with the modification of the uh, wall sign being the capital M being 18 inches. No, no. no. the O's. The O's would be 18 inches and the capital M will be 30 inches. Uh, I would just say within proportion. In proportion, please. Because we're not exactly sure what that's okay. going to be. <laughs> we'll go within proportion then. In proportion to the design plans. The logo, yeah. 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 Design plan stated March 2nd, 2022. Uh, the restriction on the lighting to 90 lumens per square foot. And that the lighting be turned on one hour before opening and one hour after closing. Anything else, gentlemen? Good. No other signs except uh, by further authorization of the uh, of this body. Is that going to address the, the poll sign, the way he's saying that? Well, you already have a permit for this, then it doesn't. Right, but what if they want to rebrand in three years? Is that then they'd have to come back. That's not that um, okay, do we have a second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Five zero. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, you very much. much. Appreciate you it. Wanted this back, right? Yeah, please. Wait on these. Okay, so we need to. Back. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're just going <laughs> to take a quick break. Well, actually, I don't think we need John for this. We're just yeah. continuing. There's no one here. So, um, well, it was D1, right? Thank you. That wasn't OK. So we'll just continue it and see continue what happens. See yeah. What okay. um, so we'll take a motion to con continue D1 training. Motion to continue D1 training. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5 0. And the last item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from our April 5th meeting. Did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? Yes. yes. Take a motion. Make motion. a motion to approve the uh, minutes dated April 5th, 2022. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. Any new business? No. Take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. Meeting adjourned. Bingo, bingo.